my name is Martin Cavanagh. I'm a qualified vet. I worked in veterinary practice for 15 years in the in the south of Ireland, almost exclusively with cows. Um, I work now for the last 11, 12 years as a veterinary consultant or an animal health consultant, where uh, I work with farm management systems or farm performance uh, to get the best out of it, get the best out of both the people, the animals, and and, and profit. Uh, so that's my job. First thing I'd like to talk about is. Uh, some things that we're just seeing at the moment on some of the Swedish dairies, there's been there's been quite an increase in milk production on a number of the dairies where we're, we're, we're easily getting over 40 kilos of milk on average and that's been a combination of uh, good diet, better cow comfort, um, better breeding system so uh, the fertile cows are coming into the system and uh, we've better days in milk on farms. So. And also, I think there's a little bit of a knockover from uh, the the very dry weather uh, last year because some more concentrate has come into the system to replace some forage, and I do think the the feeding patterns have changed a little bit. Um, there, there's some risks in this. I think some farms have have mastered it well. They've maintained fiber quality, mix quality, diet quality, and I think uh, our cows are managing okay. But I'm certainly seeing some of these really big Holston cows on a number of farms um, eating a lot more than we would expect. They're getting into 26, 27 kilos of dry matter on average in some of the pens. Um, so the, the, the acid load on these cows from just the diet intake alone is very, very high. Uh, so combine that with um, diets that are very high in energy to drive milk yield, uh, where the NDF or the fiber content inside of these diets uh, can be marginal. Um, we have a risk of acidosis in these cows. So while these cows will perform very, very well for a period of time, the risk is is that overall feed efficiencies start to come down a little bit as we burn more feed in the system to get more milk, uh, and also that we start to disrupt cow health and we start to see issues arising with um, feed, issues arising with rumen health and some cows just not making it through the system well. So I have a little concern. Um, in general, I find that the people that we're, that, that we're working with are very good managers and they're really seeing, uh, they're really holding body condition well on cows and, and keeping cows fit. But some of the farms who that, that don't have as good cow comfort maybe and have some issues around management, uh, there is cow risks. So let's be a little careful here. I think there's a couple of things that we need to look at. How are we going to approach room and health in these very high yielding cows? Are we adding um, more stabilizing additives into the feed like acid buffs, yeasts and so on? And they come at a cost. Or are we, are we stepping back a little bit and looking at our overall system? And can we make sure that the physical factors are on the diet in terms of feed space, quantities of feed, uh, fiber quality in the diet, um, mix quality and so on? Are, are doing the job for us and there may be a bit of a combination of both so my concern is if we keep putting in things to solve acidosis problems in terms of dietary additives where do we go on cost when we're looking at getting those extra liters so we might get an extra three four five liters in, um, on average in these cows but what is the uh, what, uh, what I call the cost of those marginal uh, liters a lot of the liters we get I suppose early the early part of the liters are cheaper. They're coming from forage, they're coming from cow's natural production per se. So how much money are we spending to get the marginal liters? So we might need to go back and look at that. Maybe cows doing very high liters are not where we need to be economically unless we can really justify uh, the cost that, that, we're, that we're putting in. So, so there's an issue of cost, there's an issue of marginal liters. There's also an issue here of are we pushing uh, cows even in a high forage system and even in a full food system into acidosis risk. Uh, so there are some of the negatives and I think there's probably a bit of a, uh, there's certainly a review needed there. Um, I am worried that, that, that the push on dry matter intake, which I, I agree with for cows to keep the keep body condition and so on right, where, where is the point that we're running into trouble? So we're probably back to something we used to do before, as in look at those cow signals. If we're getting indicators of acidosis in the herds, low butter fats, increased cell count problems, 
variation in, in, in intake. Too many thin coals within the groups. Too many fat coals within the groups. Um, you have variation in manure that you can't really control very well. Constant dietary changing to maintain those extra liters. All these issues of variation um, are, are, are acidosis pointers. So it could be time to step back a little and have a look at this and make sure that we're going in the right direction. Obviously we have to be careful that there is a pursuit of litres also in that we need to get enough litres off the farm to make our repayments and with the uh, with more farms in improving their infrastructure and that investment is, is going on uh, the demand coming from the bank side is going to be litres litres. So there is a balance point. I think it's very it's important that we hit this balance point and that balance point for some farms could be different from other farms. Some farms we can do we can do it at 37, 38 kilos. And some farms we can do it maybe at 43, 44, 45 kilos. So uh, where we strike that balance point is going to be how we view the farm, how we view the cows, and how we make that feed work for us. Um, so uh, I suppose the advice is don't underestimate the power of acidosis to create problems in the farm that you don't see for a period of time. That's, that's the negative, that's the risk factor. Uh, the positive factor is, is that the management standards, I think, have increased so much on many of these farms that 40 kilos plus may not be a problem. We just gotta watch the economics. We gotta watch the economics for that. Okay, so I'm not saying lots of bad things. <laughs> we, we, we have to remain very positive, and I think, I think as we develop and we move, move on with the systems, um, I think we'll, we will find the areas that work for us on the individual farms. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I'm looking at the cow comfort side, uh, the big changes I, I've seen, the farms that are running well with cow health certainly have really, have really sorted out soft beds. I think that's, that's been the key thing. And I think anybody who's increased the space where the cows are operating in, in terms of the feed alleys, the crossovers, more water. So more water, soft beds, increased space. I think that's given us exponential returns, much more than we can predict. Um, and certainly where, where we have very good quality, well-bred, excuse me, very good genetic cows, uh, they, they're responding to those changes. Big time. Uh, my role as a, a veterinary consultant or an animal health consultant, and I'm careful with that term, um, is, 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 is to work with the overall farm management system. And our goal at farm management systems is to find a profit on the farm. If we're going to have a sustainable system, our farmer has to make profit. And the farming family deserves to make profit and they deserve to have a comfortable life with it. Uh, and as part of that social contract, uh, also our, our animal, our cow, deserves to have a happy life and, uh, and we must keep that in mind that cow welfare, how we manage cows through the system, is appropriate for the system. Um, the third part of that contract is the consumer, that that consumer feels um, uh, that the food, the quality of the food that, that they're purchasing is both safe and it's right for them and, and it's their decision. So, so I think we have three elements to that social contract that we have to keep in mind. And part of my job is to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm very conscious from my, my veterinary background of, of the state of the animal. Can we make profit for the farmer? And, and, and am I making sure that the food quality and food safety is right? And that includes antimicrobial resistance and so on as well. It's our, our social responsibilities within farming. So, so that's the overview, that's the big level. Uh, I suppose at a more farm level, really what I'm looking at here is <clears throat> that, that, that we're profit centric, um, that we know that we can build or develop a system, a farming system on that particular farm that delivers profit within that circumstance. And that applies in any country. We identify very clearly what's been sold and then we have a way of, of getting there to sell that product and to do that in a cost effective manner. So we're profit centric, not what I call margin centric. Okay, so it's very clear. Um, so there's four elements for me to that when I'm building or designing or developing a farm system. One is the, the animal itself. Are we putting the right animal in the, in, in the right system? So is, is that animal fit for purpose? Have you chosen that animal correctly? Uh, can they survive and manage and work within the environment that you're building around them, uh, within that feed system that you're putting there and within your, your skill set as such? So, and... Uh, and that's an important consideration because the, 
animal animal choice will often determine that health and veterinary outcome uh, because if the animal is inappropriate. Uh, a simple example, 700 kilo Holston being asked to walk in a grazing system doesn't function without huge support or maintenance support. It's the same way that we have a low producing high solids cow that's been put into an indoor high volume system. It, 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 it's the same piece. So animal fit for purpose and the animal's base health being looked after, be it in terms of infectious disease, parasitic disease, or its production disease environment. Are we making sure that the animal fits? Um, the, next part of, uh, the next part of that and, and what we're involved in is the environment we build and put in around the system. So that's going to be the, the, the system um, the animal lives and works in, and the farmer and uh, lives and works in also that they can do it safely. And we, we look at the work routine in there. Can you get around easy? Can we, can we reduce the labour demand by building the system smartly and also making sure that that animal can work to its full potential within it? So, so, so that's a key part. And that applies again in all farm systems that have their different demands. Uh, the next part is feed and water management. So, and I always call it management. I really don't call it nutrition anymore because I think it's a combination of both rationing, getting the diets, the energy, all that correct. And I think we've, we've many people with skill to, to do that. But the piece is, can we actually get enough of the right diet into the right cow the right way? And are we feeding them appropriately for, for the profit we're attempting to generate within the system? Um, and so a grass-based system, are we maximizing that? Are we getting that grass in and, and supplement is, is coming in to complement that grass system? Or if we're looking at an indoor system, are, are we really, really uh, strong in our forage quality? Because forage quality is going to drive everything within that system in terms of cost. The other part of that is how that fits with the environment. Are we making sure that the feed space access, the ability of the cow to access and feed in that system is, is, is actually correct? So the last element, and often I, I put it at the bottom of the diagram, are the, are the people, the people working the system. Um, and that's the farmer and their, and their family, or it could be the workforce or employed workforce in there. But there's only so much people can do, but also people support the whole system. They make both the decisions and they carry out the functions and the work of that system. So have we enough people? Are the people able to do it? Um, and has the system been developed well enough that those people can be rewarded correctly from it? So we have a couple of things to look after there. So if, if, I'm looking, if I'm looking at an overall system uh, where, it's, where it's breaking down or it's not working correctly or we're not getting the type of profit we actually need, it's one or more of those four elements are causing issues or causing bottlenecks within the system or a constraint. And so my job is to see where those constraints are. Are they within the environment, in the feed, is it the people's capacity, the work routines, protocols and so on, or is it within the cow health itself? Um, so I must, I must identify the largest constraint and release that so that we get the largest return from our, our, our investment as such. Um, and often the issue is, is that as vets, consultants, nutritionists, advisors, we sometimes can get focused on smaller issues that have low impact um, rather than genuinely finding out what is the biggest issue. So uh, that's the challenge and I think that's where some of the expertise comes from. So the overall farm system, profit-centric, four elements, animal, feed and water management, right environment, and getting the people right.